Oh man, this thing is awesome. Come on, I wanna turn. No, I'm sorry. You know, last time you were in charge of security, all our stuff got stolen. It's not gonna happen. I thought my job was After Effects. This is our new first piece of magic weaponry and uh, no offense, you're, just, you're bad luck. Oh, just let me try. No, wait, Ow. don't touch. Oh, by the way, uh, who's this guy? Oh, new security. After we got robbed last time, I decided to beef it up a little bit. So, hey, by the way, don't let anybody touch my hammer, especially not this guy. Only let me through here, got it? All right, all right. Hey, what's up, bud? I'm just gonna go touch that hammer real quick. Nope. Thing. Why not? I just wanna give it a touch. Nope. No, I'm just, um, don't worry about it. Chris said it's Chris fine. said not to let anybody in except for him. All right. Maybe there's another way. How to do transformations. All right, let's see here. Hey guys, Aaron from Big Talk here, and we're gonna talk today a little bit about transformation. My cousin came to me the other day and he said, I don't like who I am, I wanna be somebody else. I said, perfect. I'm here to tell you today, how to transform yourself into a different person. Raw salmon, rotten pickle, some capers. Take your capers, squeeze a little lemon juice, rub them on your nipples. Imagine who you wanna be and instantly it will happen. Hey guys, thank you so much for watching. Hit that subscribe button, leave a comment, and go to my Patreon page for support. And do it big. Oh wow, it's a lot easier than I thought. Hey, Chris. I am Chris. I'm gonna touch the hammer that I said only I could touch. Yeah, you're, yeah, Chris, yeah. you're the boss. Yeah, yeah. you get a raise. Thank million you. dollars. Wow. Yep, okay. million, million dollars. Thank, thank you. Great work. Wow. best plan. We've been wanting to do a transformation effect for a really long time. We talked about possibly doing the mystique effect. We talked about the mission impossible effect. Um, but finally, we decided to do this transformation effect from Mortal Kombat. Mortal Kombat! And then Adrian pointed out that the effect is actually pretty much the same as Loki's transformation effect, but far less relevant. And you know what? We gotta get those clicks. Gotta get those clicks. That's right. First, we obviously had to shoot our footage. If you have a pro account on Production Crate and you want to skip that step, check the description for our link where you can download the footage that we use. That's right, or you could just search for Loki Effect on Footage Crate. So we put these pink tape marks on the ground. They were actually meant to represent our footsteps. Chris and I took turns walking on this line while I played a metronome on my phone to keep our timing consistent, like a dance. We also picked a spot on the wall to stare at so we could keep our heads facing in a consistent direction. This means we weren't able to look at our feet to make sure that we are actually hitting the marks. So while one of us was walking, it was the other person's job to watch their feet and say out loud how much they missed the last mark by so that in post we could easily find two shots that match. Obviously to play it safe, we, we did a lot of takes. A lot of takes. Like, are you sure it wasn't only a few? We did a lot of takes. In After Effects, we line up the selected shots using the spikes and audio as a reference. If you actually downloaded the footage from Footage Crate, they're gonna be already lined up for you. Turn the opacity down on the top clip and watch it through to verify. If the shots don't line up perfectly the entire time, you can just make a note of that and do the transformation at a point when they do line up. Make it work. Make it work. So go ahead and create a new solid and turn that opacity down. So now you can see through it just a little bit. Apply the gradient ramp effect and set the shape to radial. Go ahead and swap the colors. Make the white hot spot somewhere around your first actor's face and the end black point uh, probably around their feet. On top of that, add the fractal noise effect. Make the settings however you want, but set the blend mode to overlay. Next, apply a threshold effect. This will convert all your gray colors to be either solid black or solid white, and you can animate the level slider to control it. This is how we're going to make our map. The threshold effect makes the 
edges look pretty crispy. So add a fast blur to that. You can actually leave it pretty low if you want that hard edge, but you can also make it pretty soft if you want. Ours is softer than you might expect. Like a pillow. Like a mother's love. Like two examples is enough. <laughs> we need this layer to follow our actor's movements. You could animate it by hand, but we recommend jumping into Mocha real quick and drawing a loose spline around the talent's face and torso. Let that thing do its thing and hit export. Select the After Effects tracking data option and copy it to your clipboard. Well, back in After Effects, just paste that onto a null and parent your fractal noise solid to the null. Now you can animate the threshold effect to make the solid go from totally black to totally white. There's a couple of issues here that need to be addressed. First, since Chris is a little bit shorter than me, there's no hey. shame in it, man. I'm sure you're a giant on your home planet. Our faces don't quite line up, so I'm gonna roto out a tiny section, like 15 frames worth, at the start of the transformation, so I can just scoot Chris up a little bit to make our faces line up, and then I'm gonna animate him back down over time. In the background, there are some funky things happening with those shadows. It'll be especially noticeable if you went with a harder edge for your mat. To get rid of those, we'll just drop a clean plate over the whole thing and loosely mask around our actors, which is us, leaving room for some feathering. Go ahead and set those two subtraction masks. That'll cover up any background issue. Now for the glowy part. Ooh, so pretty. In the project window, duplicate your main composition. Grab the duplicate and drag it over the create new composition button. This will make a third composition and import your second composition as a pre-composition. <laughs> Say composition again. Give this third comp a name to keep from getting confused. We'll name it glow comp. We'll name it what? Glow comp. Glow comp. Glow comp. Glow comp. Glow comp. Uh, huh. uh. Glow comp. <laughs> Take a clean plate and drop it in over your pre-comp and set it to a different transfer mode. This will make everything black except for the actors. On top of that, add an adjustment layer with a tint effect and a levels effect. Use the levels to crush the blacks a little to get rid of any noise that might be showing up and crush the whites a lot, like all the way. So we're left with just a straight black and white image. Go back into your main comp and find the solid that's being used as our mat. Copy it along with the null that it's parented to. Go back into the, into the what? Go comp. And Go paste, comp. And paste them in. On that solid, change the fast box blur amount to about five or six. Also add a tritone effect. Change the highlights to black and the midtones to white. Put this solid on a multiply transfer mode. What we've created here is some white lines that will make a border between our two actors. I don't want a border between us, bro. Then do something about it. But in the end, we, we still have the border, so it's not as powerful a metaphor. Oh. Drop the glow comp, mm, glow comp back into your main comp over everything. What? If we zoom in, we can see that there's some weird crunchy details in here that we should smooth out. So a vector blur and a fast blur can take care of those. Next, find an effect called CC Light Burst 2.5. Ooh. You, you can use a trap code shine if you have it, but it's not necessary for this. In the light burst effect, just keyframe the center to move along with the action. Go ahead and set the rest of the values to whatever you want. I honestly think we just left them as default. Apply a tritone to this layer and change the midtones to bright green and the highlights to a super pale yellow. Set it to an add transfer mode and bada bing, bada boom. There's the effect. It's a lot easier than it seems. For sound design, we use the sci-fi hums and the reverse glass sound effects for the majority of the low-key transforming sound effect. We actually went ahead and compiled them all together into a single file, which you can download for free what? from Sounds Crate. Just search Loki and you'll probably find it. If you spelled it right. L-O-K-I. If you have any ideas for tutorials you'd like to see in the future, let us know. All the best ideas come from viewers like you. Well, all right, everybody, that does it for this tutorial. You're really awesome. Hey, by the way, we're almost at that magical number. That number, of course, being 26,237. Once we hit that amount of subscribers, we are going to throw a subscriber party. Nobody's invited. <laughs> It'll just be me, Adrian, and Layden Creighton. But it should be pretty awesome. So thank you to everyone who has subscribed and supported us this far. We are so very near our final goal in life. <laughs> That's it. Don't hate production, Craig. <laughs> Thanks for watching. 